every time we come back to Beijing, it seems there are more people, and especially more younger people. This is so different from the China that we grew up in. It used to just be coal dust and Mao suits. Check it out. <laughs> the founder of communist China on a clock. China is urbanizing at warp speed. The people our age flocking to cities like Beijing. That's one reason Beijing has expanded 20% in the past 10 years. But what does this capital city offer China's younger generation? And how do their new lives in the city affect the country villages they come from? I'm Jeff Hutchins, and I'm a photographer. I'm Peter Hutchins, and I'm a filmmaker. We grew up in China, and now we're going back to capture China in its moment of change. And there's only one way to do that, to get lost. It's hard to believe, but about 100 million square meters in Beijing are currently under construction. The buildings are newer and the people are younger. Not bad for a city that's more than 2,000 years old. You know, we're 45 minutes outside of the center of Beijing. It's just this tidal wave of construction and development that's rolling through this area. I mean, even the, these farmhouse kind of things that we're walking through right now, I'd be surprised if they're still here in six months. And we've come to the fringes of the city to meet a group that's living on the fringes of society, a Chinese punk rock band. You can hear them pounding out the drums from here. I think this is the right place. So, you know, Subs is one of the few groups in China, the few underground punk bands, to have a female vocalist, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, I'm just curious to see how these guys see themselves, you know, in the context of modern Beijing. They get a little hard to hear. The cheap rents here in the Tongzhou district have attracted a lot of artists, like Kong Mao and the Subs. Come out, yeah, nice to meet you. Oh, cool. Everybody, we're Yeah, you guys rock. Cheers. Oh, Gambe. Oh, Gambe. It's too big. I don't think so. What is it like to be uh, punk in China? Do people look at you or do they think you're different or just they, normal? Maybe they think uh, we are a monster. You're a monster? <laughs> <laughs> really? And most of the Chinese people don't know what is a punk. Punk rock makes up just a small part of the Beijing music scene, and that's why the government allows them to freely create their music. But outside influences, including Western rock music, are putting a lot of pressure on the status quo. What do your parents think of punk rock? My, my mother and father still hate me playing really? punk music, yeah. And why are they so mad? Because they think um, a younger should uh, marry a rich man have a good job and uh -huh. clear. But Kang Mao isn't interested in following a traditional path. And in Beijing, she can make her own way. I really like punk, you know. I really think uh, I can choose my life. Like Kang Mao, Beijing is inventing its future as it goes along. Sometimes there's a little more freedom, but Kang Mao has to be cautious. Is there anything that you cannot sing about? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Sometimes uh, we say in English is um, safe a little bit. It's a bit safer. safer. Yeah. For example, we have a song named The Brother. It's about um, from um, 1989. No, I'm sure that's pretty sensitive to talk yeah. about that yeah. stuff. 1989 was a tense year in Beijing. Pro democracy protests ended in violence in Tiananmen Square. But the government has eased up a bit since then, and voices like Kong Mao's are starting to be heard. 
We're gonna get to hear them play tonight. Well, right, thanks. We'll see you yeah. tonight. Uh, we'll see you yeah. guys tonight. Yeah. Yeah, tonight. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. <laughs> In the clubs of Beijing, the rock scene has been quietly growing for more than a decade. So people like Kang Mao may be changing Chinese music forever. We want to see another aspect of Beijing's youth culture. So to find out, we've come to Beijing University to talk to a guy who's close to Kang Mao's age, but on a much more conventional path. Beijing University, I mean, it really is beautiful. We're actually here because we want to talk to someone who's in the Communist Youth League now and about to join the Communist Party. Is this him? Hi, it must be Peter and Jeff. Yeah, yeah. Li Xiao. Ah, nice to meet you. Hey, how's it oh, going? Cool. Yeah. Li Xiao is in his final year majoring in quantum physics. So you're not only studying physics, but you're also in the Communist Youth League, right? Uh, yeah. What percentage of your classmates are actually part of the Communist Youth League also? Very, very large. Li says that being a member of the party gives him opportunities and connections. It's interesting that he sees joining the party as a choice. I thought not joining was really not an option. So do you have to be a member of the Communist Party to be in the government? Oh, no, not necessary. Uh, you know, the, uh, the head of the Ministry of Technology uh, now is not a, a, a Communist Party member. Really? Has, has that always been the case? Uh, no, uh, it's just within the five or six uh, years uh, when uh, uh, the uh, President Hu Jintao uh, came to the head of the party. He wants to make an uh, important transformation that uh, the government is uh, relatively separate from the party. I ask Li how the Communist Party is changing, and what he says is surprising. They want uh, some, someone can uh, give their uh, own opinion uh, and um, put some uh, suggestions rather than just uh, agree with them and do nothing. <laughs> So what do you think of something like the Tiananmen Square protests, um, that, that kind of independent thought? Actually, at that time, uh, I was three years old. <laughs> yeah, uh, I heard of that. Uh, I think um, it's okay for people to raise their uh, own opinions, but, uh, I, uh, but it, it's inappropriate to uh, do in that way. Yeah, uh, the, the, um, the most important thing is that you should not disrupt the society. I wonder how Li Xiao feels about his own future. Is he as idealistic as our friend the punk rocker? Is money important to you? Science is more important for me. Li Xiao and Kang Mao are taking advantage of the new opportunities in Beijing. But I wonder what it's like in China's provinces, beyond the bright lights of the big city. We've worked up quite an appetite exploring the city. So we decide to grab a bite to eat. The Chinese are pretty much known for eating everything. Yeah, well, there's even the saying in southern China that we eat everything in the air except for planes, everything in the water except for submarines, and everything on land except for a car. Yeah. It's pretty true. What's that one? Phoenix! Phoenix. Oh, okay, all right. Phoenix is very good. Oh, yeah, let's, uh, <laughs> I'm going to take your word for that. Let's check on this side of the table here. Wow. Starfish? How yes. Starfish? Yeah? It's good? Yeah. Starfish! It's a mature jagger. How do you uh, eat it? You have to eat it. Everything? Everything? Yeah. It's not too bad, at least. No. It's halfway edible. No. We're going from starfish to our favorite Beijing punk rock star. This is the club where Kong Mao is playing. From the small crowd, it seems punk is still barely making an impact beyond the subculture. But Jeff and I are definitely in the spirit of things.